there are two questions that I would like to propose to the viewer and two answers that I would also like to propose to the viewer. Of course, I do not expect you to uh, agree with me or, or believe what I'm saying, but just to consider for yourself. The two questions are, the first question is, who, or more specifically, what was Christ? The man from Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth. Who or what was he? And the second question is, what was crucifixion? What was crucifixion? Now these two questions, really, I should add a, a clarifying word, and that is psychologically speaking. So psychologically speaking, who or what was Christ? And psychologically speaking, what was crucifixion? What was it? Interestingly enough, some people might be surprised to find out, Nietzsche had a very, had kind of a rather actual intense interest in these questions. He definitely was not a atheist in the sense that is meant today. Definitely not a skeptic in, in the sense that is often meant today, although in a sense he definitely was. But this is getting to the heart of a question that I have had for a long time. So question number one, psychologically speaking, maybe physiologically, but psychologically speaking, specifically, what was Christ? I would like to propose to you the idea that Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, was a proto-Ubermensch. A proto-Ubermensch. A prototype. A sort of model. But yet, blasphemy, in a sort of blasphemous way, to say this anyway, an incomplete prototype but a prototype nonetheless. I would like to suggest to the viewer that every once in a while, maybe every few hundred or a few thousand years or a couple thousand years or something like that, a sort of ubermensch appears a different type of human. I would like to propose to the reader that human, as we experience it, all throughout history, is not necessarily what is common. And what I mean by that is not just in the last 2,000, 10,000, 20,000 years of recorded human history but throughout our entire existence, or as some would say, evolution, that there used to be a type of human that was different. And this type of human was a sort of ubermensch, a sort of ubermensch, but only a prototype, and definitely not the end goal. But I would like to... I would like to suggest to the reader, or to the viewer, sorry, that 
Christ knew himself to be a certain type of human that was rare, that occurred rarely. A sort of ubermensch, a prototype, but not the ultimate ubermensch. Not the ultimate ubermensch. So if you can consider that as proposition, that Christ was a proto-ubermensch, then we can get to the second question, which is, psychologically speaking, what was crucifixion? What was it, psychologically speaking? Well, to the Romans, what was crucifixion? Well, crucifixion to the Romans, public crucifixion to the Romans, was a way to send a message to would-be opponents, would-be enemies. That if you oppose the regime, it won't end well for you. That was the message that they wanted to send. And what better message than to publicly shame and torture your enemy before everyone's eyes. That would instill fear. That would leave... That would send a message to those looking on. Don't mess with the regime. So I would like to suggest to you that as implied in my previous Nietzsche narration that one of the biggest struggles in human history was overcoming the human animal's poor memory. The human animal's poor memory. Well, to publicly shame and torture someone via crucifixion was indeed a powerful means to overcome bad memory. Indeed, such a spectacle seared into the human memory a message that would not be forgotten. So I would like to propose to the viewer that Christ, the proto-Ubermensch, knew that. He knew that well. And as being different from others, and he knew he was different, he wanted to make sure that the idea of Ubermensch was not forgotten. So he would have asked himself, I propose to the viewer, what is the best way that I, proto-Ubermensch, could make sure that I and my type, which is so exceedingly rare, is not forgotten. Hmm. Well. If a proto-Ubermensch like Christ, who really was no criminal at all, was actually probably, in terms of his disposition, completely magnanimous, open-hearted, carefree. He knew he was different. What would be a good way of burning into the memory of the 
ever forgetful animal, man. This Ubermensch, this proto Ubermensch. In the hope that one day, the non proto Ubermensch would arise, the complete Ubermensch. Well, what would be the best way to make sure that you don't forget the idea of Ubermensch in a world full of fickle, forgetful, angry, messed up humans? What would be the best way to make sure you're not forgotten? Well, I propose to the viewer that Christ clearly saw he must suffer and die in the most shocking, unfair, in memory creating way possible via crucifixion so that you so that I would not forget about him that particularly not him but what he was that his type would not fade into oblivion his memory needed to be burned into, seared into the mind, the forgetful mind of the animal man. And thus, paving the way, the potential for the even greater Ubermensch to eventually come. Nietzsche said, aphoristically, the, the quote, Jesus said to his Jews, Love God as I love him, without morality. What do us sons of God have to do with morality? End quote. I often wondered about that. You see... After Christ died, a very important, a very interesting faith commenced in his name, initiated by the Jew, St. Paul, Saul of Tarsus. Now this religion, this faith, commenced by St. Paul, was a guilt-based faith. But Nietzsche seems to make the distinction that Christ ultimately was about non-guilt. Ultimately. Although Christ would have foreseen that his memory would have been turned into a guilt-based faith. But I would like to propose to the viewer that Christ also foresaw far, far beyond St. Paul, far beyond St. Paul. And Christ looked forward to a time where humans would indeed love God in the way that he loved God. That is, without morality. That, he, that Christ looked forward to a day where the sons of men would love all the sons of men would become complete ubermensch. That although Christ initiated a sequence of events that would involve St. Paul starting a religion based around Christ based on guilt Christ ultimately looked forward to a day where guilt itself would be overcome. And paradoxically, as St. Paul said, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Well, I would also like to propose to the viewer, I would like to propose that death death in that context on an ultimate level maybe subconscious level but at an ultimate level means guilt 
guilt would be done away with forever. But no longer through blood drops, no longer through blood drops, no longer through the blood of Christ or through any blood at all. But that a time would come, I, be I, I believe and I propose to the viewer, that Christ saw that a time would come that his, his guilt-based faith, which St. Paul started after Christ's memory, was secured by crucifixion. That down the road, the, the liberation of all humanity from all guilt would come. So this, these, these are the ideas I'd like to propose. One, in review, Christ as proto-Ubermensch, who wanted to make sure his type of human was not forgotten. And in light of how crucifixion burns a memory in the human brain he knew he had to die in such a way so his type was not forgotten the shock of someone like Christ being crucified would have shocked the mind so much because ultimately Christ would have been the least deserving of such a fate out of all humans he would have been the least deserving but He would have accepted that as his fate to make sure his type was not forgotten in the hope that one day all humans would become ubermensch. That all humans would join together and say Nietzsche's words, what do us sons of God have to do with morality? So how do humans get there now? in this world that is still racked with unending levels of guilt. How do humans get there now? Well, my next video will be a book review. And it has to do with the idea at the end of Revelation called the book of life. Thank you.